Thanks for coming along to the webinar this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. Um, the webinar is titled Optimizing Production Storage for High-End Documentary Production. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I'm David Fox, waving, uh, from RQR. I'm in the UK. And uh, with me for this webinar, we've got two, two other people. We've got Martin from Limecraft, CEO and founder of Limecraft. Hi, Martin. Hi there. Good to have you here. Uh, Martin's going to tell us all about the Linecraft product in a minute. And we've got Olivier from Hotel Hungary. He's CTO of head uh, and head of post-production over there. So hi, Olivier. Thanks for joining us. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. Hi. Olivier's got lots of uh, interesting stuff to tell us about how he uses these products together. So just to, before we kick off, um, we've got 45 minutes of webinar for you, and we're allowing five to ten minutes at the end for questions. But that, if you've got lots of questions for us, great. We'll stick around. We'll miss our evening meals. We'll answer your questions. So ask hundreds of questions if you want. Um, Go to webinar has a questions box. So we just want you to type your questions in there, either at the end or during the webinar. Either is fine, and we'll go through all of those at the end of the webinar. We're going to record the session. We had an earlier session. One of the two will go out on uh, on the YouTube link, and we'll, we'll send you a, a link to it, plus a slide deck, everything else, so you don't need to write anything down. So the content of this webinar is uh, is on this slide. So we're going to give, begin with an overview of the Limecraft platform, followed by me telling you about RQRP5, just the basic facts in case you're not familiar. And then we'll go into looking at this sort of case study on how and why Hotel Hungary integrated Limecraft with scale logic storage and RQRP5 and LTO uh, archive cold storage. And then we'll wrap everything up. We'll take your questions. So I hope that sounds like a good plan for the next 40 minutes or so. Um, I'm just going to come in here and turn my camera off because you don't want to look at us for the whole thing. You're better off concentrating on the slides. Uh, so let me just go full screen again here. And let's kick off with Martin and an overview of the Limecraft platform. And you're going to tell me when to advance the slides, Martin, and I'll do that. Yeah, thank you very much, David. And uh, thanks to all the attendants for, uh, for joining us this morning or tonight in uh, continental Europe. So for those who've never uh, come across uh, Limecraft, it's a, a native uh, cloud, native uh, asset management uh, stack. Uh, production asset management, media asset management, whatever <laughs> asset management, used by producers, uh, mostly television content. Uh, it's not live, but we can handle documentary, fiction, unscripted reality, and we have a couple of news agencies uh, among our customers. All of these, without exception, uh, are faced with uh, challenges in the area of scalability. Um, finding out that it's it's becoming increasingly difficult to uh, swallow all the raw material delivered on the incoming side um, and to uh, uh, create all those masters and deliverables on the outgoing side. Um, sometimes it's a matter of speed and uh, indexing using AI in the case of uh, what we're talking about here today. Uh, high-end, high-volume production like uh, documentaries, uh, projects, or uh, continuous drama, that it's brutal. Uh, it's, it's about how to handle petabytes of content. Uh, usually on uh, local storage, uh, the cost of putting that in the cloud would be prohibitive. Um, and when you put it on local storage, the next question is then how you make it accessible to uh, your remote editors and, and people uh, abroad. Um, and Hotel Hungaria managed to integrate it um, in a way, uh, hybrid storage, so it's uh, scale logic online storage with uh, cold storage uh, next to it, managing several petabytes of content, putting Limecraft on top, which, uh, so to speak, puts a, a secure layer uh, on top of all that uh, technology, allowing them to uh, find the optimum between uh, cost and uh, performance. And if we go to the next slide, uh, David, um, it's, it's, a, it's a more uh, general problem where US producers um, need to produce more content faster, 
Um, you need to output it uh, globally. Some of our customers uh, operate uh, in, in London with post production, but they get rushes from all over the world. More and more um, uh, video formats become bigger and, and content needs to be personalized and that uh, commands automation, that commands a more agile approach, combination of local storage for performance where it must be combined with uh, cloud-based uh, convenience uh, where it can. It has to be secure um, and uh, with or without knowing it, there is a lot of AI under the water surface uh, allowing to uh, automate the intake of material and, and taking baby steps into auto uh, editing. Um, in general, Limecraft strives to um, uh, get rid of manual work. Uh, audio sync uh, logging, the only way to uh, ingest uh, 1,000 hours of raw material per month is to highly automate the intake, uh, giving back time for play storytelling, freeing up edit base, um, and that is 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 not for convenience. That's a must-have for um, high-volume producers. So uh, on the next slide, uh, there is a schematic of how how it looks like. Um, we'll look at a couple of uh, screenshots in a, in a minute, really. Uh, Limecraft's core expertise is not in developing AI of, or, or, or uh, selling storage at the contrary. Our expertise is in, uh, in the user interface and understanding the workflow um, and making all those technologies available uh, in a single coherent user uh, experience. Uh, so we connect to, to tapes and uh, online storage, nearline storage, cloud storage as, as necessary and we connect with as money, much uh, AI vendors as possible. Uh, we integrate with uh, Abbott, Resolve, Premiere, so that people don't need to copy and paste and don't need to uh, manage uh, exports, uh, etc. Looking at the, the more specific case of uh, Hotel Ungaria's wildlife uh, production, uh, the majority of the content is shot uh, in Sony uh, XOCN format at a rate of uh, 650 megabit per second over a period of multiple years, um, uh, creating a total of 1.5 petabyte uh, before they started uh, cutting. <laughs> so hence the, uh, the scalability problem. And not just the brutal uh, storage of the, of the files, also um, finding the needle in the haystack eh? thousands of files um, that have been uh, produced. The challenge is how to find the, the, the right uh, uh, pieces of material for the uh, editing. And that's what Limecraft is all about. Uh, we've got a uh, screenshot on the next slide, if you want, uh, David. Uh, here is a typical uh, look, and you might sense the simplicity of the, of the user interface. Um, it's, uh, we've tried to cut down the complexity as much as possible, yet, uh, like in the example of this wildlife uh, uh, project, uh, in, in other cases we could use speech-to-text transcription, um, or for news agencies we often use face recognition to make content searchable. In this wildlife project we had to integrate uh, animal detection, uh, and if you're looking for Gazella, if you click to the next slide, uh, it will um, it will return all the images possibly containing uh, Gazella uh, with uh, an, uh, a reasonable error rate. Uh, uh, Ten percent of the images will be false positive, but uh, overall, it's a huge help for edit producers, um, and that's what Minecraft is about. Uh, we don't want to be editors to be too deeply um, uh, concerned about uh, technology, it just needs to work and we package those technologies in a single user interface. More importantly, if we can switch to the next slide, uh, David, um, uh, at any point in time, uh, as Olivier will explain, the main storage is on, uh, on cold storage when you're dealing with super high volume, uh, you don't want to have it stored online. Uh, the majority of the, the stock is kept alive on tape. And um, these producers don't need uh, tape operators or archivists to restore it from on tape. It's just built in the, in the user interface. And if we go one step further, David, um, 
with a single click of the button, uh, storyboards and pre-cuts, uh, sync pools, whatever is the name, uh, with the applicable metadata, uh, comments, uh, sound bites, um, uh, production uh, metadata, can be exported uh, to the timeline of any editor of choice. Um, image on the next slide, uh, David. Um, and then we will make sure that all the applicable metadata travels along with the media, is put as markers on the timeline so that uh, also the editor can, uh, can benefit from uh, all the preparatory work and the metadata we've harvested along the, the, the production process. So just to wrap up, if we switch to the next slide, um, uh, David, Limecraft is all about um, allowing you to create a more compelling story. We talked about a single collaborative user, uh, user uh, uh, interface and workspace. Um, it copes with uh, all file formats without having to bother with transcoding technology. Uh, it hides the underlying complexity of uh, usually hybrid storage environments with uh, three or four storage technologies where content is automatically migrated in the background from one storage node to another one. Uh, there is a lot of artificial intelligence, but what Limecraft puts on top is that uh, all these, um, I would say, AI aspects, speech to text, face recognition, image recognition, are boiled down to a single timeline so that you as an edit producer can ask advanced queries and combine different um, terms in one uh, one search uh, uh, one search um, and then uh, seamless multi-vendor access refers to the the, the, the ability to integrate with the Microsoft uh, uh, Active Directory as well as uh, uh, Avid Central UX Media Composer Adobe the full stack uh, in all of that instruments to improve the job of professionals not to make them uh, redundant. And I think we've got one more slide for the, the Linecraft part, David. Um, uh, the business case and how we think about sustainability. Um, when we look at the particular project of uh, this wildlife project by Hotel Ungaria, shooting uh, 1.5 peta over a period of three years, um, if they store it on uh, LTO8 tape on HP hardware using Arcware as a uh, middleware layer, the cost per terabyte uh, boils down to 10 euro per terabyte. If they would have chosen to store it all on scale logic or a similar online service uh, at the unit price of 120 euro per terabyte, just for this project, ladies and gentlemen, they're they're realizing a direct saving of 100,000 euro and uh, looking at the whole, that's 30% uh, saving, um, uh, making intelligent use of tape versus putting it all online. Now, uh, we're not in the business of, of uh, making online storage redundant, at the contrary. Uh, the key message here is uh, when you succeed in balancing cold storage and, uh, uh, and online storage, uh, making sure content is uh, directly accessible for uh, online editing. Uh, at the same time, it's uh, stored on cold storage for volume optimized uh, preservation. Uh, that's a big thing when we scale to larger uh, operations. And by the way, uh, this project only saves 10 kilowatt per hour, uh, 10 kilowatt hour uh, on a daily basis, uh, in total 3,650 uh, 3, kilowatt hour per year, which at least in Europe, it would be a, a small to mid-size uh, household uh, power consumption. So every project has the potential to save electricity worth of one household. Um, and one last aspect, uh, there's a deliberate choice of all involved parties uh, to give the customer Hotel Ungaria, in this case, uh, a feeling of uh, comfort by avoiding vendor lock-in. Because Limecraft is the, the piece of software that orchestrates the, the storage. Hotel Ungaria becomes independent of, uh, you know, Nexus, Isilon, Scale Logic, and, and RQA. And reversely, as Olivier will explain in a couple of minutes, by making sure whatever is stored on Scale Logic and RQA is human readable by a proper folder structure, Hotel Ungaria at the same time, in principle, becomes independent from, from Limecraft. No one has the intention to 
to sack Linecraft or Scalelogic or Archiver, but uh, it becomes um, uh, more scalable, more independent, more uh, solid, um, which gives them uh, the comfort to uh, to manage their uh, architecture more uh, closely. Uh, there is more data uh, and um, uh, evidence and data points on the customer case on our website mentioned over there. And on that note, I'm giving the floor to David. Thanks very much, Martin. So um, with that, we'll come back to the Linecraft product and how it's actually used by Hun Hotel Hungary in a minute. But before that, I just want to give those in the audience that are not necessarily entirely familiar with Archiweb P5 a quick overview. So Archiweb P5 is a software product that you can install pretty much anywhere, either directly on your storage servers, on Windows, on Linux, on Mac, on VM, wherever you want to put it and uh, comprises these three modules. So we have um, two modules which can deal with LTO. Those are backup, which is there for disaster recovery purposes. Archive, which is there for migration for long term or for structuring a project, as, as, as we we're explaining today. And also we have a replication product, which can push data between different hosts over the IP network. So um, the focus today uh, in our integration speak is about archive, but um, most um, media companies probably need some kind of archive, but not everybody's aware of the difference between backup and archive. So just to cover that off quickly in a minute, um, everybody needs a backup, which is a copy of your data. Um, it's, it, it allows you to recover your storage if you have a failure. So it's a disaster recovery tool, DR. And it runs every day, probably against all of the production storage, so that you have an up-to-date copy of everything on tape or in the cloud. And everybody needs at least two of these backups. So if you only have one, maybe you need another one to be entirely entirely safe and secure. Archive, on the other hand, is a different proposition. Archive is where data is usually moved into the archive. Um, in the case of the Hotel, Hotel Hungary case study, this is either, this could potentially be at the beginning after the high-res footage has been shot. We'll move it into an archive and then pull, pull it back when we need it. Uh, it allows completed work to be taken offline at the end of a project's life cycle, and it runs as needed. So, so the customer is selecting the data that needs to be archived, or the media asset management system is providing a list of what needs to be archived. It's not like a backup. You back up everything. Archive is more selective. And most media and broadcast companies, they need a proper structured archive. So lots of smaller companies we talk to, they have the typical pile of USB hard drives that they bought for a few dollars from Amazon. And it's not a reliable storage over 10, 20 years. It's not actually a cheap storage compared to LTO. It's not that fast. Uh, it's difficult to obtain redundancy um, and so on. So just pointing out that the, the, the ubiquitous pile of USB drives on a shelf where nobody knows where anything is, is what we're trying to get away with, with away from with Archiweb P5 Archive. So typical, simple um, arch archiving workflow might be where you've got stuff coming in from cameras. You're going to put that on some kind of RAID storage, maybe on set. With the addition of a P5 server that has access to that storage, you can stream that data onto LTO tape. Uh, LTO tape devices come in two flavors. You can either have a rack mount device, and these can scale right up from 25 tapes up to hundreds of tapes of all that available and online or just a simple tabletop drive, which you can stick on top of your storage device on set and write the same LTO tapes with the same 12 to 18 terabyte per tape capacity uh, that's currently available uh, for a very low uh, uh, cost per terabyte. Or Archiware also supports cloud storage. So if you're in a situation where you have a fast upload to the, to the internet, you have a gigabit or upwards uh, wide area network, then you can consider using cloud storage. And um, in terms of the types of cloud storage and tape we support, um, down here we've got our public cloud support, which includes Amazon, Microsoft, Backblaze, Wasabi, and a whole host of other uh, public cloud providers who will all happily charge you per terabyte per month for as much data as you want to throw at them with different pricing tiers, depending upon um, how quickly the data can be uh, recovered and, and how, how high the recovery costs are. And then we also have our tape support, which, as mentioned, includes the big tape library devices, 
and the smaller uh, tabletop drives that we support all LTO generations. We support LTFS vendor neutral tapes and we support writing in parallel across multiple drives. We also have disk up here, but really disk is not such uh, an interesting archive format because you're trying to usually get away from disk storage when you're archiving to get those those costs per terabytes down, um, which is what we're looking to do. So yeah, our, we, we, um, ingest uh, with ArchiWare can be as simple as simple camera ingest and uh, Limecraft can facilitate this and drive the ArchiWare software and therefore drive the help, uh, drive the tape software all from within the same process. And final slide on P5 is just to show you that P5 has its own web uh, interface. So we were speaking earlier about each one of the pieces in this solution can stand on its own and operate independently. And that includes P5, which has its own way of tracking every file that you've ever archived to tape, uh, has its own simple MAM interface where we can create thumbnails, playable proxies simply for identifying media files in the browser. We can capture metadata uh, from the media files themselves, just like a regular MAM product. And this can all be searched up here. You can search any of the metadata, any of the me metadata ingested from the files, file names, folder names, etc. So all of this stuff is always available within P5's archive uh, web interface, as well as being accessible through integrations like Linecraft. So uh, with that, we're going to move on to Olivia, who's going to talk about why and how Vitel Hungaria integrated the, the Linecraft MAM, the Scale Logic Storage, and the ArchiWare P5 archive. So over to you. Okay, thank you, David. So why did Hotel Hungaria integrate all these uh, solutions? So at Hotel Hungaria, we have uh, five different units who, who uh, most of the time work together on the same uh, project. So we have our marketing short form, scripted, non-scripted and post-production uh, units, which overall gives us a yearly average of around 100 projects, 850 shooting dates, 500 terabytes of new media every year. So in the years with uh, our nature, it was a little bit more and around 150 hours of finished product uh, a year. So to manage uh, all of these uh, projects, if you can go to the next slide, so that's on, on a five-year basis, there's around 500 managed projects and uh, 800 named users, so all freelancers, clients, and uh, production members who actually have access to uh, the, all the projects they work on. So every user has his own set of projects. So next slide indeed is one of the projects is uh, is our nature. So it took us uh, three years of uh, production time. If you can go to the next slide and we have the overview. Uh, three years of uh, production period from uh, shoot till actually the editing process. It was four year till the uh, finished product. Around 1000 shooting days for that project, 80,000 clips. So searchability was uh, important. 1800 days of editing and 120 days of grading. So going to the next slide, it's a little, I want to talk about the storage, the security uh, behind it, uh, the accessibility we have and the sustainability we gain by using these, uh, these techniques. So on the first slide uh, for the storage, the original media that comes in, uh, actually, we use Limecraft Ingest, the Limecraft Ingest tool, that's Limecraft Edge, to make a copy and a transcode. So there's first, there's a, there's a first copy uh, to the production uh, server with a checksum, and this uh, copy is automatically uh, backupped um, with Archiware to LTO. So that's actually our backup slash archive. So it's actually disaster recovery from our production server. Once the files are copied, which checksum are on the production server, the cloud connector of Limecraft will also make a second um, project, a second backup, but on a project level. So everything on Limecraft is stored on uh, project levels. And the Limecraft ingest tool will also make an edit proxy uh, to put on the video server using the cloud connector. So having all these different um, the original media and the proxy media available on the different servers 
allows us to, uh, through cloud, uh, up and download footage or edit proxies to do remote uh, editing. Um, or, uh, and also the editing on-prem is secured through the edit proxies, but the remote editors can also download via LiveGraph Row, can download also the edit proxies to work, to work remotely. So if you look at, if you look at this next slide, you will see that at this point we have 2.3 petabytes in cold storage. So everything immediately on arrival at the facilities is, uh, is, is backup slash archived. So for us, it's more a double archive immediately instead of a backup for all the projects. And actually on our 40, 450 terabytes of production server, we keep all the original media from the active projects. So in case of our nature, we had more terabytes than our production server could handle. So we moved everything to uh, the LTO uh, cold storage and retrieved it once we needed it again for the finishing of the project because shooting day one and uh, having the image lock from the edit suite was three years in difference. So we put all that content on the cold storage and then when we held the image lock, we retrieved actually all those images again from the cold storage and put them on the production server instead of keeping everything uh, live on the production server. So, and as you can see, because we work with different uh, edit proxy codecs, we have an even smaller uh, video server where we can install all the uh, original media in a lower edit proxy uh, codec. Next slide, please. So as you can see on the left side, that's, that's a, a typical user um, view. So every user has this uh, specific logging uh, to a project and only sees the projects he has access to. Using then uh, Active Directory, that same user will also be able, in a read-only environment, will be able to see the project folder on the scale logic on the production server. So for the users, it's really, it's human readable also on the server side. But what is nice is that uh, on the next slide, you will see that our um, server backup and the backup that the Linecraft creates is that it's the same folder uh, system that is there available for the tech and uh, support team. Um, so if we need to do a disaster recovery, we can do it through the server backup and put the tape back onto the server. Is there a, is there a server uh, issue? If we want to restore uh, something from the Linecraft backup slash uh, archive, we can actually do that through the software. So on the next, it's the second slide I talked about. It's one more. Mm -hmm. One slide further, please. Yes, sorry yeah. for that. So a user can, inside of his project, ask for one shot or multiple shots from a collection or a complete uh, or a complete pro uh, project. He can ask to restore from uh, Arkov. So he can retrieve all the images in original media. The user will always have access to the project and to the uh, streaming proxy files. So we can always upfront see what material do I need, which selections uh, do I have to make. We can also upload uh, an AF or an XML file uh, to the system, to Limecraft, and say, hey, these uh, images used in this timeline, please retrieve them, restore them from the archive. So we will only bring back what is needed or used in the timeline. And if we can go one slide back, sorry for that. And then actually to clean up the production server, we can actually purge the projects on uh, Linecraft, uh, on the online uh, platform, where we can ask to purge the raw materials or the proxies or whatever uh, we want. And Linecraft will then uh, remove uh, this footage from our production server. But after it does a double verification, that he's sure that everything is also stored on the LTO using Archiware. So we are always sure that we have an Archiware database, we have a Linecraft database, and everything is searchable, humanly searchable in every level um, of the process. Okay, the security I slide, like that's the, two slides. I like this warning. Have you thought long and hard about what you're about to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just we just go for it because we know everything is on double LTO. So 
yeah. that's the nice okay. part. And it's, everything is, is backup and archived at the beginning of the process. So that we don't have to do anything anymore in the end or wait for an actual uh, backup. The only thing the system does is double verify is everything in order. Yeah, yeah. So you have that peace of mind knowing that everything at the beginning of the uh, of the project was was safely stored on LTO. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's correct. So and then on the on the security level of, of these uh, of these tools, so we have three security levels. So actually, the first one is the 800 named users at this point all have to. Um, create an account using a two-factory authentication. And the nice thing for us is when somebody of the company leaves, we can remove them from the platform, so automatically removed from uh, all projects. Or actually, when somebody uh, doesn't have an active role anymore in a project, on project base, we can also say, ah, you don't need to be in this pro project anymore. So this project will disappear from the project list of that uh, user. Uh -huh. Then on the second level is uh, is project based for us is um, when a project is finished that actually you don't need any active you don't have any active members anymore so we close a project and all the members in that project only get read only access anymore so, so they don't they they can't change anything anymore to the project they can't delete anything they can't add anything but they can still look at um, look at files and download something, but uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. And then what's, uh, for me as CTO, one of the most important things is how do you secure your server? So the nice thing is that um, our server, so the, the scale logic, the production server, has read access only for everybody. So a user uh, through the Active Directory can also log in uh, onto the server if we allow it, and only has read access only to the server. So for an editor, he has access to his project also in the back end of the server, but only in read access. So he can uh, do nothing wrong. And then uh, secondly, because we make a backup slash archive in the beginning of the process on call storage, we are also very safe against uh, external attacks, ransomware, uh, because we will never lose our original media because it's immediately on a cold storage. So that's an extra uh, safety feature that uh, that I love pretty much. Always good for so a CTO then, to yep. be able to sleep at night is to have uh, everything important offline, ideally on LTO, because then the ransomware has no access to it, even, even if there was uh, yeah. an infection. Yeah, that's correct. And then uh, on the accessibility, you saw very important what Martin explained. If you have 80,000 uh, clips, then you need to have some uh, searchability. Uh, so uh, sometimes automated in transcription, sometimes also manual, um, manual tagging. Uh, like, for example, the cameraman, they know what they shot on which date. They update it in an, in, uh, in an Excel file, and automatically we can input that information into, into Limecraft and make some tagging. And then uh, what's nice then uh, after the search or at the creating of the selection in the next slide, uh, what Martin explained is that you can export this to, um, or it's, it stays linked to the edit proxies who are on our video server. So in case of a director or an editor who's searching for an image uh, in the search on Limecraft can export an AF file using uh, his search uh, search results and putting that uh, on the next slide on, on a timeline where he has his selection he made in uh, Limecraft or uh, Avid Premiere or, uh, or Resolve. But what's nice about it is that what we see most of the time is that an editor is working on his edit station and directors are uh, mostly all the time looking and searching in Limecraft to give extra input to uh, to the editor. And then last but not least on the ac accessibility uh, side is the sharing possibilities. So of course, people who are inside uh, the project can uh, see all the, the media that's there, but uh, an easy system to share uh, files without them leaving actually your on-premise uh, server. You, so you can share with a customer, you can share uh, a link choosing I uh, can download or only view, download only uh, a proxy file or download also the original media. The thing is you don't have to upload it. 
to a, a third party uh, file transfer system. It's all, it all starts from your own uh, on-premise storage. If the customer wants to download the original media, Limecraft through the cloud connector will make the gateway for the customer to download it from your, uh, from your local storage. And then last but not least, uh, sustainability. Um, actually, yeah, the server capacity, uh, we have 450 terabytes. When bigger projects come along, like our nature, we know we have the, the LTO to expand, so we don't need, need to buy in urgent a bigger server or upgrade our server capacity, so we can stay on the same server capacity. Includes also the electricity cost that stays uh, the same, it's not fluctuant, because LTO is cold storage and we can just store it in a cabinet and, uh, and, and, and it's done, it doesn't cost a penny anymore. And then last but not least is actually the, it's not something you can calculate uh, immediately, but transportation cost because of the remote edit, the remote access, directors that work from home to make selections for the editors or editors that download the edit proxy uh, and edit at home. We have uh, Lina who works all the time in, uh, in London on our daily show, on a daily cooking show we do. And uh, Ula, she's from Poland and she travels between Poland and, uh, and Belgium and she always works uh, works remotely. She never comes to the office. So once you get the setup going and you have some good editors who, who implement the system correctly, then there's no need for them to travel anymore to the, to the office. So that's my part of the presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks for that. I think it's an interesting workflow in that I think most of our customers tend to do the archiving of the media at the end of the project in order to make space for the next project or just to stop the storage from filling up. So I think what's fascinating about this workflow is that you begin with the archive because there's just so much quantity of footage coming in and then you can use your edit decision list from the NLE softwares to tell you which assets need to come back from tape for the final conform, if you like, for the final output. and. Um, yeah, so I think that's really interesting that you can use Linecraft to achieve that kind of a workflow. So, um, just a couple of slides to let you know what the URLs are to, to find out more. Arcuware is at arcuware.com. You can download, you can get hold of a free five or 30 day trial evaluation key. We're really keen on the, on the end users working with resellers to get a proof of concept running on premise either with tape or cloud storage so that you can start to get an archive workflow running and see see how it feels before you decide if that's something that you want to go through with. Limecrafter at limecraft.com, all of their resources, case studies, information about the product, you'll find there. So um, so with that, how are we doing for time? We're doing really well for time. So um, I'm just going to come out of full screen now just to see what uh, questions we might have from you guys. So. Um, those people that are attending, ah, uh, yes, cameras. Uh, if you're if you're listening, then please um, uh, let us know if this was interesting. Um, let us know what you think. If you'd like any further information from us right now, we're happy to give you that. If you have any questions, so I'm just going to look on my other screen here at the go to webinar. So I'm going to going to read out the questions that we've got. Um, thank you, Matt, for the comment. Bob, uh, how can we integrate within our existing infrastructure, especially with regard to storage? Um, do you want to do you want to answer that one, Martin? Existing infrastructure, or I guess this is something that you did, Olivier, because you you did you already have your um, your storage before yeah, so you put in the other modules? Yeah, before. Uh before this, we had uh, Isilon uh, storage, uh, so pretty expensive versus uh, Scale Logic, uh, and actually uh, we integrated the cloud connector to connect to uh, to the Isilon. So all the projects were also human readable uh, stored in folders. So adding Linecraft on top of it, just using Linecraft at this point, Linecraft started editing the project itself in a in a human readable uh, folder uh, structure. So actually, it was more. Uh, adding the new projects uh, inside of our old structure. So mm -hmm. that's not a, that's, that's possible to do. 
And then uh, projects uh, that were in production, those projects were the projects that we actually also moved to Limecraft to be able to use uh, the tooling uh, Limecraft could, uh, could support and to make sure that the running projects were uh, correctly archived, backup. Um, so it, it's pretty easy to, um, and I always excuse myself to Martin, but it's pretty easy to pull out Limecraft, still keep working, or even uh, plug it in. It's it's uh, quite easy with uh, with the cloud connector system that you can put on any server you uh, you please. Yeah. And uh, to the rest of the audience, it's it's uh, Olivier mentioned uh, cloud connector. It's a piece of software which is actually the key to the integration with the local infrastructure. Yeah? So Minecraft is in the cloud. Uh, you want to uh, use, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, local storage for performance reasons or for cost or for geopolitical or whatever uh, reason and combine it with uh, processes that are running in the cloud. Brilliant for co-production or uh, 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 multiple geographical locations. Um, and that's possible through the installation of a cloud connector next to a piece of software. Cloud connector is responsible for um, being aware of new files uh, and communicating with what happens in the cloud and vice versa. Um, it's secure. Uh, it's much more reliable than putting a watch folder in between, and it's much less complex than uh, commissioning custom development uh, by connecting APIs. And the um, obviously the, the tape infrastructure is going to be on-prem, so that connects through the cloud connector so that you have a host on-premise that has SaaS or fiber channel access to the tape hardware. Yeah, and, and any variation in between, eh? we've got uh, customers on, on uh, Nexus, uh, Alo, uh, Alto um, uh, Disk Archive, uh, plus a nearline storage, plus a tape, plus a secondary backup in the cloud. Sometimes there are five different storage technologies uh, that have to be uh, uh, orchestrated, uh, and I think this, that's the, the, the beauty for the end user. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. completely transparent. May, may I add some one thing more that's pretty nice and, and, and unique, I think, is that your original media doesn't leave your premises. So it's not that the original media first has to go to the cloud to go back to the LTO. So it's all stays on-prem and it's actually Limecraft through the cloud connector that organizes that from uh, the project settings. So it's mm -hmm. pretty neat that your own footage doesn't leave your premises. Okay, so um, now we've got a question from Bikram. He says, what kind of production is this workflow best suited to? I guess he means by like wildlife production as we have here, or is it applicable more broadly? It's, it's more broadly. The design pattern which we've been discussing the last uh, 43 uh, minutes is, I would say, high volume slash high quality. Uh, there is... Similar deployments uh, for fictional producers, uh, that particularly those that do uh, continuous drama. So for feature film, 20, 30, 40 shooting days, it doesn't really make a difference. Uh, you know, single camera production producing one and a half or two hours per day, um, uh, ending up with 40, 50 hours. But when you're in continuous drama operating multiple uh, multi, uh, multi-cam studios, um, you might shoot uh, four or five hours per day, 20 to uh, 220 days uh, per year, and you end up with uh, similar volumes. Uh, so this is very, very useful for such high volume uh, operations. Okay, uh, Matt didn't just say that it looks good. He also had a question. So he says, looks very cool. Uh, any good camera workflow system has one archive from camera offload, two archive of projects at the end, and three continuous backups of projects and media in progress. So um, I guess that's um, not a question so much as a statement. Um, is there anything that you want to say in response to that one? I want to comment on that one. So that's, that's completely true. So that's uh, the continuous backups of projects. That's also something uh, also with our remote editors. So Linecraft doesn't only hold our uh, audio or video. Uh, they can uh, hold PDF files, information, uh, transcripts, work documents, 
uh, and also project files. So we always ask our editors internally or externally to actually also send their project. When they upload a video, they will also upload an XML or an AF connected to that video. So can, they can add mm -hmm. that information to, uh, to one video. And then on the other side, uh, we, there's also Linecraft tools, um, which enable you to actually automatically push all the, the, all the info that's in that uh, watch folder, also send it actually to Limecraft so it lands on your server on the right location, and in our case, in a read-only uh, environment. Um, so I, Matt is right, <laughs> and we do all those things uh, automatically. You do all of those things. So well done, Matt, you're correct. Uh, <laughs> okay, just looking at the, the next question. Um, no, I've already read that one, so I just need to flick down. Um, okay, so this one says, Martin, addressing you. Um, looking ahead, isn't this a solution to a temporary problem? Will cloud technology not become more flexible? Question mark. So, uh, uh, and then flexible, probably meaning capable of swallowing larger volumes. Uh, uh, we, we once thought... Uh, the original plan was to ask producers to forklift all their high-risk footage uh, in the cloud, but uh, frankly, it's it's almost like file formats grow bigger faster than network uh, internet capacity uh, yeah. is is growing. Um, we've just onboarded uh, since uh, January two customers that are shooting music events in uh, for in uh, 8K. Uh, formats um, and not just doubling, but putting uh, another multiplier on the on the file sizes. Um, we may or may not expect um, uh, more three D uh, type of uh, images, field depth uh, recordings. I, I don't see file formats uh, becoming smaller. Uh, so I think uh, a good combination of Local storage optimized for performance and collaboration in the cloud is there to stay for a few more years. Mm. And I think cloud storage costs, cloud object storage costs have been static for quite a long time. But with the cost of energy rising, um, it's likely that they're going to go up. Take LTO tape capacities go up and the cost per terabyte slowly goes down. Um, not something that you get again with, with, with discs. And disc arrays take a lot of cooling and power, which is expensive. So the fact that tapes are offline, not consuming power, whilst the tape is sitting there holding 12 to 18 terabytes worth of media footage is a big difference in cost, especially as you're talking about 1.5 petabytes. And putting 1.5 petabytes in a cloud and then paying for it and uploading it is a big, uh, is, is, is not something to be, uh, to be overlooked. Not something that you should think is straightforward. And so and the big um, cloud issue, the big cloud issue is the download because uploading yeah. is not really the issue. It's always when you download, they charge extra if you need it fast. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. getting the speed of uh, recovery from an LTO tape is always faster. And even if you pay maximum, it's still faster than what you can receive from, yeah, uh, from yeah. the web. And you always have to pay those download costs. Um, and yeah. I think if you're planning on putting stuff in the cloud as more of an insurance policy, so it's just another copy of something, it's an insurance policy, you're not expecting to download it. It's, it's different. This, this kind of workflow, you are expecting to download a certain amount of this footage. So you don't want to be paying for it on a gigabyte basis. Okay, well, it's 10 minutes to the hour, so uh, I think we've um, we've filled our 45 minutes. Um, there's no more questions I can see there at the moment, so um, all those that attended, thanks very much. Thanks, Martin, and thanks, Olivier, for, for being here. Um, I think this makes no a really good resource about what's possible with these with these, these products, so we have a nice video here that we'll, that we'll share with you all. Um, so, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we'll see you in the next in the next webinar. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, all of you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.